Welcome to 10 Frames Per Second, a podcast about photojournalism with photojournalists for everyone. Hosted by J.M. Giordano and Elena Volkova. Welcome to 10 Frames Per Second. Uh, this is J.M. Giordano, photo editor of the Baltimore City Paper, and my co-host... And I am Elena Volkova, Assistant Professor of Art and Visual Communication Design at Stevenson University. I'm a practicing photographer and I teach photography. Great. And uh, this is 10 Frames Per Second, the podcast about photojournalism with photojournalists for everybody. And we came up with the concept of uh, 10 Frames Per Second because we wanted to explore um, just the, the niche of photojournalism in the photography spectrum. And that's bringing professionals over... To, to speak with us, uh, talk about their work, talk about how it is working in the field, some practical things. Um, we're not going to focus too much on gadgetry and the bells and whistles, but really get into why they do their work, how they do their work, uh, where they do their work, um, and what, what projects they're, they're currently working on. Elena, what do you, what do you think? So what is the show going to be about? A prominent documentarian photographer, Sebastian Salgado, once said that the function of documentary photography is to show one person's existence to another. And I believe that photojournalism goes way beyond that. It goes way beyond evidence. It changes people's opinions and it changes people's lives. And uh, photojournalism is just a slice of what we know as photography. It exists in parallel to many photographic practices. And uh, we're interested in how photojournalism spills into other realms of photography, fine art, documentary, instant photography. For example, everybody practices photography today and everybody documents their lives and um, shares different approaches and shares their experiences with pretty much everybody, Facebook, Instagram, social media. And uh, how does photojournalism encourages people to have important conversations and uncomfortable conversations touching on political and social issues. Also, the challenges that photojournalists face and interesting things that drive their work. What drives, uh, you? and you do a lot of personal work, what, what drives yours? What drives my work? Um, paying attention, paying attention and sharing a part of... Well, what, what subjects do you, you know, it's kind of our mock interview for our introductory mm -hmm. piece, what uh, what kind of subjects do you like to um, to focus on? Oh, well, in my personal work, which may or may not <laughs> have to do with photojournalism, in my personal work, I focus on the everyday and overlook moments that kind of construct our existence. I guess it's it's personal stories, documenting personal stories. That's cool. No, I think that's that's good because I think that's why co hosting with you is is going to be great because you can bring. A theoretical side where I work in the practical, the everyday world of assignments and taking on series and trying to show people what's wrong with the city. I'm not a very happy <laughs> <laughs> photographer. Uh, taking on homeless, teen homelessness, uh, AIDS, uh, the homicide right here in the city. So I, I want to talk to other photographers across the world about about their work of the similar thing. And then I think, you know, what what you're bringing to the podcast is fantastic. It's going to be more philosophical, uh, theoretical, more really challenging, really making making these guests think. Um, I'd like to see, you know, guests from Donna Ferretto, who's pioneered the work in uh, domestic abuse, to Don McCollin, the, the recently knighted British war photographer, and everything in between. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with you. I, I think it's going to be a, a great show. Thank you, Joe. I'm looking forward to working with you because some questions that I think are important to explore while we're talking to our guests are um, commitment to long-term term projects versus assignments and how different photographers um, work with reportage versus long-term projects. Right. And I think while you're asking the, the deep philosophical questions, I'm going to ask the trivial questions like, how do you pay for this stuff? You know, how do you get funding? And I, you know, and one of the shows I'd like to do in the future is one on, on taxes. Like how, as a photojournalist in the field, for students, for, I think we have a lot of students. When I, I do a lot of talks at, at universities here in the city and uh, abroad, and a lot of students don't understand the practicalities of actually a photography business. We're not going to get into like running a business. Like that's not what the show's about. But I think we can also offer 
these up and coming photographers some insight onto how to be, you know, if you're, if you're shooting a project in Israel and it's tax time in America, how do you do that? How do you get someone to do that? Or how do you do that? And a lot of people can't afford accountants. A lot of people don't have the facilities to do that. So I think, you know, those are some of the topics we're going to cover, which I think will go from the theoretical to the practical, which I hope, I hope, I hope people will really, uh, really enjoy. Um, also, uh, for young photographers, how do you get into the field of photojournalism? How do you find assignments? How do you balance uh, your own interest? In, how do you balance your own interest with the assignment that, for example, City Paper might give you? Um, and how also how do you get paid for your work? I think that's that's slowly, very, slowly. Yes. Yeah, very it takes, slowly. Takes ten years <laughs> to establish your portfolio and oh i thought you were going to say it takes 10 years to get a check it takes about nine years to get a check from a lot of places so oh gosh. which I, I know and that's another thing payment i mean that's that's a great uh that's a great thing so i'm looking forward to doing this podcast and i think a lot of people will be entertained by it i think people will definitely be informed by it and maybe we'll encourage people that are uh like myself i was i did a lot of fashion work and advertising work uh to sustain uh, a career and, I, and in around 2013 i dropped all that and, and took up uh, social documentary and photojournalism and I haven't looked back I can sleep well at night a lot of people respond positively to what the work photojournalism ph photojournalists do it's a very important field to be in as a photographer if you're in the news business because as much as they're pushing into video I think that there'll always be a place for the still photograph I, I tell students that take for instance the Eddie Adams picture of the South Vietnamese uh, sergeant shooting the uh, North Vietnamese soldier in the head there's a 16 millimeter uh, film of that, and then it's over in an instant. And no one remembers that there's a 16 millimeter film of that. Everyone remembers that still photograph. I mean, e even more recently, the, the the still photographs from Ferguson. I mean, there's there's tons of video, but there's certain still photo still photographs that stick in your mind, and that's why I think the photojournalism is still a very important to the news gathering industry. Still, a still photograph is not how we experience reality. We don't experience reality in still images. Uh, so a still photograph is considered sort of by default as a piece of art because because of that, because that's not how we well, see is it. Is it a piece of art because it's the moment that the photographer chose to press the shutter, therefore kind of creating that piece <laughs> and how they frame it? Let me rephrase it. Maybe it's not a piece of art. Um, a still photograph, we remember a still photograph, because it has uh, a different place, no? I need to think about it, maybe next time. <laughs> well, that's, but that's what we can get into. I mean, it's good that we have, we have our own questions that we can't answer. Maybe throughout the course of this podcast, we'll be answering them through the guests. I mean, I think that's a good way to, to self-analyze also. I mean, we're not here just to interview ourselves. We're here to get insight onto why we think this way. Are we right? Are we wrong? Is there a right and wrong way to think? So I'm, I'm excited about about getting this all together and I, I really want to get in to in depth with a lot of our with a lot of our guests what story do you want to tell and I think that's going to be a big part of this podcast is storytelling I and mean, that's kind of a cliche thing to say when it comes to podcasts like we're, we're telling stories but I think it's going to be good to let these photojournalists tell their what their experiences are and what they bring to the table when when shooting This has been 10 Frames Per Second, produced by Audrey Gatewood and John DeVecca at the WLOY Studios at Loyola University, Maryland. 